The word harlequin means to be fancifully dressed or ornate, and it's no wonder that this bug that I want to introduce you to is called the harlequin bug because it is definitely ornate in its decoration. You can see that it's got an orange and black pattern to it, so don't confuse it with the ladybug because this one is not a good insect to have in your garden. Unfortunately, um, this insect will overwinter in some of your plant debris. So this is one of the reasons why it's often good to go ahead and clean out your garden in the fall and get rid of that plant debris um, so that you don't overwinter pests. Um, however, sometimes people like to do that because it overwinters good insects, but it also can overwinter bad insects. So as you can see, the numbers of bugs that we have on our mustard greens here and also our pak choy behind us um, are increasing. In fact, they're kind of headed over towards our broccoli, our kale, and our Swiss chard. So we want to make sure we get some control on this um, pretty soon. And you know, one of the things about the harlequin bugs, it's almost as bad as the squash bugs as far as the numbers can get out of control so quickly. And that's because after two weeks after the harlequin bugs begin to emerge out of that um, plant debris after the overwintering, over you'll find that those females can start laying eggs already. So you might recognize those eggs because they have a uniform pattern where they create this double barreled um, and the barrels, the eggs look like a barrel shape, but they're white and black striped, um, but they're in double rows typically. So you'll find those often on the underneath side of the leaves. So you'll want to be looking for those. Usually there's anywhere from 10 to 12 eggs in a kind of a cluster there. And so after two weeks of emerging, those females are going to start laying those eggs. And in the early spring, when the temperatures are cooler, those eggs will hatch within about um, 20 days. But as those temperatures warm up through the summer, those eggs can hatch within five days. So you can see how your numbers of bugs can really increase over that season. Um, now it does take a little while for those small larvae or nymphs to actually develop into a mature adult. However, you will get about three to four generations of harlequin bugs each season. Now, we still want to treat these. I know our, our mustards are starting to age out now at this point, and then obviously our pak choy behind us, you can see, is starting to bolt, so it's kind of past its prime. You might think, you know, I don't want to spray or do anything with this. I'm just going to rip them out. However, wild brassicas are the preferred choice. Um, they will go after your warm season crops if they don't have anything else to eat. So you still want to make sure, even if you're taking these out, that you might be vigilant about watching them on your tomatoes, your okra, your squash, your corn. They will go after those warm season crops later in the season if they don't have anything else to eat. So how do we control these harlequin bugs? Well, if you just have a few numbers, one of the things to do is to kind of look at your plants. And if you see a few of these, just go ahead and pick them off and destroy them somehow, get rid of them. Um, and also make sure to be checking the underside of the leaf, again, for that double row of the black and white striped barrel eggs. And you can either smash those with your fingers. They're not very big, actually. They're very tiny. So you can kind of smash those with your fingers or simply pull off that leaf and, again, dispose of that. Um, make sure you do destroy those eggs so that they don't actually hatch somewhere else and cause a problem later on. Um, if you have larger numbers like we do, there's two options to spray. And so an organic option that you can use is something that has either um, neem oil or pyrethrins in it. Both of those are labeled an organic. The nice thing about using an organic spray is the fact that um, there is no pre-harvest interval date. And that is the number of days that you need to wait before applying this chemical until you can actually harvest your crop. So the um, PHI, as it known, is as known as zero. So you can apply this up till the time you are actually harvesting. Now, the one thing you want to be cautious of with neem oil, as the name implies, is it is an oil. So you want to make sure to spray this and apply this on your plants either early in the morning or later in the day because putting an oil on your plants when the sun is at its brightest and hot um, can actually do some damage to the leaf itself. It's sort of like putting baby oil on your skin and then going laying out in the sun. It can really um, affect those plants and cause them to burn. So be cautious if you're using neem oil in the heat of the day. You really want to do that early morning or in the evening. So that's one option is to use neem oil or pyrethrins. 
Another more synthetic option is to use either carbaryl or malathion, um, and those are also options. Now, they do have a pre-harvest interval that you want to be aware of. Again, depending on what crop you're applying it to, whether it's a mustard or um, your broccoli or your kale, you want to be aware of that as well. So you can see the damage that they do cause to your plants and why you want to treat these um, because of their piercing sucking mouth parts. Um, so what they actually do is stick their tiny little straw into these plants and basically have the, help themselves to a kale smoothie by sucking out the plant juices out of there. And each time they pierce those plants, it's causing that damage onto that leaf. And that damage is what you really see. So either be looking for the bug itself or if you start to see kind of this cloudy effect um, and this damage on your leaves then that's a telltale sign that you might have the harlequin bug so be on the lookout and make sure to manage those before your numbers get out of control we hope you enjoyed this video as part of our oklahoma gardening youtube channel you can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.